What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode. This weekend we're hitting all the places. We're, uh, we're right now we're in Hope and we're gonna make our way down to Soldatna, do some pole fishing, and then we're gonna make our way down to Homer to an Airbnb that we rented for the weekend. We're gonna hang out with some friends and uh, have a good time. This is one of the last weekends we're heading down south and it's kind of bittersweet. We're uh, moving in about two weeks and going down to the desert over to Nevada and we're driving driving all the way from Alaska down south so should be fun but you know leaving Alaska it's gonna be it's gonna be sad but we're excited for the adventure Camp for the night. All right, guys, so we have the Kodiak canvas tent on a six foot Chevy Silverado. Chevy Silverado. Silverado. Six foot bed. All right, so this Kodiak canvas is from Cabela's. Richard paid about 300 bucks for it. Covers the entire bed, fits two cots, and it stays pretty warm and toasty. We've tested it in some serious winds. It acts as a living room of sorts. But yeah, we got three, we got three full-size camping chairs in here and we were just chilling out when it was like torrential storming one night and this thing held up like a champ, so let me just step in here real quick. So right now, the tent is actually held up within the bed, and so you have to take these off and then put these poles in. These poles all collapse, and so the bed essentially fits into, fits into this pouch right here. So literally the size of their cots, so this is their cot, this is the whole tent, it fits right in this bag, so it's about the same size as a cot. Pretty sweet. That and this is canvas tent. This thing stays super warm, um, especially if you have a buddy heater going in here, it gets real toasty real quick, but essentially you can lay both of the cots out side by side right here and then you'll have a little walkway. But this thing is giant. Again, it's a six foot bed in here and there's a lot of room. These for the night. And this thing fully seals so you can't get any bugs in but it's this tall in comparison to the cab. You got some windows to vent it out. And a little shader up there so it keeps the rain out from, from getting inside. And this thing stays pretty dry. We've had some serious rainstorms in this and it's done great. So again, this is Kodiak canvas, purchased from Cabela's for about 300 bucks last year. All right, so Reba, Richard's wife, she makes her own dried food, just like Mountain House. Put about a cup of, cup of boiling water in here and then let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then it creates some amazingness. So we're gonna try this out tonight. So Cajun red beans and rice. Man, there's so many bugs right now, sorry guys. And then we got uh, beef chili, so one and a half cups. All right, so we're making some of Reba's beef chili. Beef chili. So what we do is we're taking it out of this, out of that pack, throwing it into this pot, and then putting about a cup and a half of water. Two cups. Two cups of water in here, and then let it sit for 15 to 20, 15 to 20 minutes. And it will be delicioso. This is Reba, y'all. Okay, tell us how your process of how you make freeze-dried food like that, like this. So I always start with the uh, meat, uh, separate from the beans, separate from the vegetables. Okay. You have to separate everything and dehydrate it separately. So how do you dehydrate? Like, what does that entail? You put it on a tray, make sure it's a super thin layer. Okay. Um, I actually have a Presto. I am hmm. super impressed with it. Uh, it has eight trays. And so I can do um, essentially maybe 20, 20 different meal packs by doing eight trays. Wow. Yeah. So all at once? All at once. 
Okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a screenshot of what that looks like. The Presto that I have. Presto. Oh. By is it is there a vendor or is it just called Presto? I just bought it off Amazon. I will send you the link. It's okay. Super awesome. I love it. All right. Um, but I that's do good to know. You were able to do that like in bulk, not just oh, like yeah. single batches. Or I guess you could make one and then just divvy it up between. So I did all the meat separately. You do all the beans separately, and then you do all the veggies separately, and then you literally just measure them out into single serving packets, and then you have your. Um, you just uh, rehydrate them once the like, right. It's all good. So so by the time it's out of this presto, it's totally ready to go. You could just add some water and it's good to go again. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then you just you know throw it into a uh, freeze dried bag. You know vacuum seal it essentially. You vacuum seal it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pro tip: If you have rice or other pokeables, wrap it in a paper towel so it doesn't puncture Punk your bag. That's right. That's oh, right. okay. So that that's whenever you vacuum seal it, then right? With, with Root, rice, get out there. With rice, it will it will poke through the bag. Really? So you have to vacuum seal it oh, inside. Okay. So this is a turkey dinner. Damn. Turkey dinner. Beef no, stew. oh, that's beef stew. Beef, beef stew. stew. Beef stew, y'all. Oh, so there's gonna be. So you see how that's crumbly? Yeah. So that's beef mince with potatoes, which are separated. And then you have veggies on top of that, which have all been dehydrated separately. Okay. Yeah, so you essentially just kind of get it out. So that's why that's why the paper towel is there then. It kind of protects the plastic on the outside from getting punctured. Because the corners of the potatoes. The rice. Oh, the, okay. So for beef stew, the corners of the potatoes were puncturing. So, but you see the, you see the tomatoes and everything? Yeah. Mm hmm Okay, okay. So there you go. If you're making your own freeze-dried food, remember that. Your bat, your food could pierce the bag, so you want to use a paper towel with it. If you guys have not tried this, it's amazing. All right, so we doing a little skillet. A skillet. I don't know. I'm putting potatoes, some vegetables. I got zucchini, bell pepper, onion, um, and then we're gonna top it off with a jalapeno cheddar dog. Mix it all in. Ooh yeah, we got some jalapeno cheddar dogs. We have a child with us tonight. Don't be alarmed. We're not kidnapping anyone. <laughs> So after we put the hot hot water in there, we're just letting the food sit for a couple, about 15 to 20 minutes next to the fire. Get let them get a little hotter. Yeah. This is the chili. My baby spoon. That's good. That's not bad at all, y'all. Homemade. That's awesome. The beef is perfectly cooked. It's, it's not, not too mushy or anything. Not, it's not hard as a fucking it's got, rock. Yeah, That's it's got. Because normally ground beef is. Josh's first time having a Reese's s'more. Hey, don't film people listening. Oh, sorry. You want to be filmed? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Reese's s'mores, y'all. I'm telling you, this is amazing. Get it, girl. Yeah. Oh, there's a dog. Real. Good girl.
Good morning, guys. So this morning we're making some French toast sticks, something we haven't tried before. Got some Texas toast. Carly's whipping up the, the batter. Looking pretty good. Got some real maple syrup with us. All right, guys, so it is now Saturday night. So we left Hope. We ended up camping last night in Soldotna over at Swiftwater Campground. Did some red fishing, didn't do very good, got skunked. Not a lot going on in the water right now, so it is what it is. Um, so today, the following day, so we spent the night over in Soldotna. We've now made our way over to Homer and we rented an Airbnb, so check this place out. in Homer so we ordered four different from four different places in Homer and these are probably all the best places in Homer so we got Jackaloff got some oysters we're shucking them ourselves we got some shrimp pad thai we got some egg rolls and some shrimp we got some pizza from Finn's we got wings from Alibi's and a halibut breakfast bur or halibut burrito from Alibi's and then this is the Mariner so it's a salt and vinegar and then we have, you know, the rest of this party over here. Say hi, guys. Hi. All right, so we're oyster. shooking. So usually what you want to do, for me, it's easier to start at this end right here and you wiggle, wiggle at an angle and then you kind of pop, pop it open. So these are unshucked oysters so from Jack So when you pop it open Homer. like that, you want to um, scrape the top. It's almost like filleting, but... And there it is. There you go. And after you do that, I don't like these little shell crumblies in my oysters, so I like to get them out. <laughs> scrape the bottom. And then... People Kinda usually... Toss them, toss them around. You flip it. So it looks Whoa, better. There we go, there we go. That's for presentation. Right there. And you just put them on a plate. All right, and then you put a little bit of lemon on it. There's this mignonette that was made with some vinegar, onion, a little bit of sugar and salt, pepper. Super so good. So you just put a little bit, a little bit of that on here. Get some hot sauce. Nest two potatoes. All right. Who's uh, eating that? All right, freshly shucked oyster. How does it taste? Amazing. Good. That's good. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, let's do it. Baby. How about two videos, Carly? How about three? Carly is eating an oyster. <laughs> For the first the time? Second time in her life. Well, second time in her life. But what's his name? Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> get it, get it. Get a girl. You got this. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Limey, slippery, oceany, delicious. Why would you say that? <laughs> They're all good things. <laughs> we like the squishy stuff. Yeah. Is that what you? Is... <laughs> whoop whoop. Mm, yeah. Delicious. Mm. Tastes like the ocean. Yum. <laughs> you taste that grit? That grit. <laughs> Oh, I'm just yeah, gonna all, the, all the health benefits. It's so all the health benefits. 